after Mike and I were given permission to train in Merpatiputi, our instructor, Mas Heru Hendarto, Dr. Heru Hendarto, he didn't like us much. He did not feel that non-Indonesians should be allowed to train. And even though he was requested to do so, basically ordered by the younger of the 11th generation heirs, he still didn't know what to make of us and really didn't know if we were going to measure up. So, you know, in Marpatiputi, the ranking structures are basic one, basic two, reverse level one, reverse level two, combinasi or combination level one, level two. But for the first four, they're supposed to be done at six month increments, right? You train for six months, you build your energy, you meditate for six months, and then you get to do your movement test. You get to go and run for miles and miles barefoot. And then you get to come back and break hard materials and winner, winner, chicken dinner or wah, wah, wah. Well, we were only given three months for level one. So we started training in start of October. 1999, November, and then December. And then we became fully recognized Marpati Puti members on January 1st, 2000. So during Y2K, when everybody was so worried about computers going out, we were worried about whether we were going to survive, survive our freaking test. It was uh, by far and away the most difficult thing that we'd ever done. I was a power lifter and bodybuilder for many years. Mike has numerous black belts in other systems. It's high ranking black belts, up to third degree black belts in some systems. Nothing even came close to the level one test of Marpati Puti that our trainer put us through after three months. You know, when we passed, he was like, all right, good. All right, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I'll come back next week and we'll train. But Mike and I were so banged up from attempting our breaking Attempting. Yeah, that's the word. Attempting the breaking. Because uh, in Marpati Puti, we pour our own bricks. We don't go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get them made out of uh, cinder, which is ash. We don't get cinder bricks. We pour them so they are poured concrete of differing hardnesses, depending on how much cement and what other kind of substrate you put in there, right? So he gave us the one of the hardest mixtures in the Marpati Puti system. Just said, this is what you do. He didn't give us the beginner ones like we were supposed to have. Thanks, Mas Heru. <laughs> and so Mike and I were not able to break anything. Uh, maybe ourselves a bit. So our arms are just like in like agony for two weeks. I mean, I was in a sling. Mike was in a sling uh, for like a week, week and a half afterwards because we could barely move our arm. And what was really humbling about that experience is when Masaru put one of the bricks up and then he took two fingers and he went bang and broke it with two fingers after we had just, oh, we hit it so hard. We hit it over and over and over. We didn't want to give up until our bodies were just like, don't do that again. And he's like, okay, don't do that again. And he comes up and breaks it with two freaking fingers because of his energy generation. And he had experience doing this. And it really dawned on us right then that we were in for one heck of a wild ride. And this was not just your ordinary martial art. This required people to be mentally tough and energetically tough in a way that we were not really prepared for. And luckily we had a trainer who pushed us very hard, who did not accept our weaknesses and our complaints. Instead, he just said, well, that's fine. You either want it or I go home. How much do you want to reach your goal? As you can tell, we wanted it bad enough, and we wanted it enough. So I'd like to say thank you to Montero for pushing us so hard during those early years, making sure that we were going to be strong enough to carry this mantle for this art, to this country, and beyond. Mm -hmm.